This is Tetris, back when it was first made. If you look at the 10x20 game board where the pieces are falling, you can see it's rendered on a 20 tall by 20 wide area. The width is doubled to make sure the pieces look right with a 1 to 2 character width to height aspect ratio. If we don't care about the way the characters look, we can shrink that playing field down to just 10x20. And that's not even it. What if I told you that standard Tetris is playable in just a 5x5 space? Let me show you how. First, you might want to know why I'm doing something stupid like this again, and to be honest, that's a very good question. Tetris, like many other games at the time, consists of a main board in which all of the action occurs. On this board, there are falling pieces that each consist of four individual blocks. Now in Tetris's most simple form when it was first created, these blocks were shown in the off state with a space and on the on state with, well, the block ASCII character. In order to start figuring out how to shrink the number of characters we need to show the entire board, it makes sense that we would want to display multiple blocks with just one character. My first approach was to use the top and bottom half ASCII block characters. This would work fine and it allows us to cut the size of the 10x20 board by half vertically for a total of 10x10 10 10 or 100 characters. You see, all of this happened a while ago and I had a feeling that I could do better than just the top and bottom half characters. After looking around in the Unicode block characters section, I couldn't find anything better. But recently, I had a Eureka moment and I noticed that I was looking in the completely wrong place. Instead of looking at block characters, the solution was Braille. You see, there are two types of Braille characters in the Unicode system, the 6-dot patterns and the 8-dot patterns. I immediately jumped to the 8-dot patterns because they were literally perfect for what I needed. The height of the board was 20 and the height of the Braille was 4 we can perfectly fit 5 characters vertically. The width of the board was 10, and the width of the braille was 2. We can again fit perfectly 5 braille characters. So I went quickly to work. The first thing that I needed to do was to find a font that rendered the braille without the disabled dots showing, so I could get a better result in the end. After going through Google Fonts, the best one I found was Noto Sans Symbols 2, so that's the one I ended up using. I'm sure you could find a better font, but I was too lazy to do so. Then I opened up a HTML file, put in our 5x5 grid of braille characters, and started doing some formatting. I adjusted the line height and the font width so that everything fit together nicely and looked like it was all one coherent grid. Most importantly though, I had to make the text size larger so I could actually see what was going on. Of course, it would still work perfectly fine without the formatting, but I did it all for my own sake when testing. This is when I ran into my first challenge. You see, in order to render a 10x20 grid with braille, it would make sense to do it in three steps. Split the 10x20 grid into 2x4 sections, convert those 2x4 sections into braille, and finally assemble them back together into one grid. But the second step is harder than you would think. Here's the problem. Braille started with a six dot system, and the numbering of the dots counted from the top left down, then back to the top right and down again. This is programmatically awkward for me in of itself because we typically read arrays in programming line by line like in English. But what makes this worse is the fact that when adding the two extra dots and the eight dot system for extra braille symbols, they wanted to keep everything backwards compatible, so they added the dots at the bottom like this. At least they prevented a breaking change. After going through and looking for a bunch of libraries that seemed like they were more focused on using braille the right way instead of whatever I was trying to do, I gave up and just wrote my own braille engine. You see, each dot is assigned a value, 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc. When wanting to get a specific braille symbol, add up the values of the dots that are on and add that to this hex value. Finally, do string.from char code in JavaScript and you get your braille character. One caveat is the fact that sans symbols 2 isn't monospaced, so instead of using a space for the all off symbol, you're just going to use the blank 6 dot braille character to show the equivalent of nothing. Great, now I just wrote some code to split up the array into chunks, convert it into braille, and put it on the HTML. Now that we have a custom Tetris renderer all done, the hard part's out of the way. Now we just need to, well, do the Tetris part. Essentially, I'm repurposing some React Tetris code I wrote earlier for vanilla JavaScript. I think it's fair to answer that question at the start. Why am I doing this? This is super cliche, but sometimes it's not about the result, but the process. Learning how Braille Unicode works might not be useful now, but maybe it'll help me with a future project that's actually useful. So don't be afraid to start some silly projects that you want to do, even if it may seem useless in the moment, because chances are, it'll help you learn something. And in a worst case scenario, you get to have some fun making it. And sometimes that's worth a lot more than anything else. 
And there we have it. It doesn't look like much, but this is Tetris, with the full 10 by 20 board running in just 25 characters. Check out this project at github.com slash evanjodev slash tinytetris, and test this out at evanjodev.github.io slash tinytetris. You move with the arrow keys, by the way. Huge thank you to the Felox for their image to Braille app that helped me understand how Braille works. I would have struggled a lot more if it weren't for that repo. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see Tiny Tetris in a normal size text area, look at the description and the pinned comment below.